There are 15 things that I want you to start doing with your money right now, not just so you can have more wealth today, but so you can have more wealth tomorrow and into the future. The first thing that I want you to do is start tracking your money. In business, we say if you can't quantify it, you can't optimize it. One of the most simple and significant changes that I made in my business life and my personal life was tracking how much money I was bringing in, where it was coming from, and where my money was going out. You don't realize how much money you're spending on eating out and travel and your cars and your entertainment until you have it sitting there staring back at you and the best thing that you can do is take a piece of paper or grab a Google Sheet and write down on the top how much money you're making and where you're making this money and then below that write down your expenses line by line and categorize them by the different categories. Food, travel, entertainment and write down where all your money is going and then you will see where your money is going and immediately, I promise you, you will immediately see ways for you to start saving money through very simple changes because either you're going to find expenses you didn't know that you have or you're going to have expenses that you don't need anymore. Second, I want you to re-examine your savings and see if you're getting any return on your savings because the reality is most traditional banks still today are paying next to nothing on your savings accounts but you can consider moving some of this money to a high interest savings account. Many of these are online banks and many times they're going to pay 20 to 25 times more than what your traditional bank is paying. That doesn't mean that you're going to get a 25% return on your money. That means if a traditional bank is paying you 0.1%, you might be able to get 2.5%, maybe even 2.75% returns on your savings by just moving your money to a high interest savings account. Now again, these are online banks many of the times, but just because they're online does not mean that they're not FDIC insured. Many of them are FDIC insured. In fact, they should all be FDIC insured. You don't want to put your money into a savings account that is not FDIC insured. Many of them operate just like every other bank except they don't have a physical branch. So if you need to access your money, you would have to wire it to your physical branch or you can use an ATM or a number of different ways to access that money. But if you have cash that's just sitting there, you might want to consider getting a better return. Now a 2-3% to return on your money is not life-changing interest, but it's a whole lot better than the 0.1% that most traditional banks are paying. Number three, make this the year of cash flow. Do you know what's better than free guac at Chipotle? Getting free guac every time you go to Chipotle. I'm not here to tell you where you should invest because I'm just a random guy on YouTube, but I can tell you what I do because I invest my money in five places in this order from biggest to smallest. My number one biggest investment is into my own businesses and startups that I invest in. Number two is real estate. Number three is stocks. Number four is crypto, particularly Bitcoin. And number five is physical gold. The bulk of my investments outside of my businesses, although my businesses do produce cash flow, but the bulk of my investments are into cash flow producing investments. My real estate and then within stocks, most of my stock portfolio is a dividend producing portfolio. The reason why I like that is because it gives me cash flow. Cash flow gives me cash to spend today and it gives me cash to spend next month and the month after that and the month after that. The reason why so many people get discouraged when it comes to investing for cash flow is because when they look at the yields, they say, oh my God, I'm gonna need to invest $100,000 or half a million dollars before I get anything significant. But what you're missing is if you start investing with $100 today and you do another $100 next month and you do another $100 the month after that and you keep investing more and more money and you keep compounding your investments and you keep trying to increase how much you're investing, pretty soon over the next number of years, you're going to have some significant cash flow coming in which can help you live your life. But you have to get started. Even if it's $10, even if it's $100, even if it's $1,000, it's more than nothing. And guess what? $1 of cash flow is more than $0 of cash flow. Now, if you are an investor and you want to be more educated, that way you can make better decisions with your money, you can join something like Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free newsletter that helps you stay up to date on what's happening in things like the stock market, the real estate market, crypto, the global economy, and our own economy. It's a fun, easy to read, and witty email. Not only can you read it in less than five minutes every morning, but it's brief. So even if you don't have a financial background, I promise you that not only are you going to understand what's happening, but you're going to love reading Market Briefs every morning. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, it's completely free, and I'll put the link to how you can join for free down in the description below. Number four, do a review of your credit cards. First things first, if you cannot control your spending, don't use a credit card. If you carry a credit card balance, don't use a credit card. If you're not going to be able to pay off the entire balance of your credit card each and every month, 
don't use a credit card. If you're going to be paying interest to your credit card company, don't use a credit card. A credit card and the perks are only worth it if you can pay off the entire balance each and every month and you never pay a penny in interest. If you're paying a penny in interest, you are the one that's paying for everybody else's perks and you got to stop doing that. I love using credit cards because I love getting the cash back, I love the perks, and I love the rewards. However, I'm not a credit card hacker. I don't have the time to sit here and try to find the best credit card for the best purchase and try to figure out which rewards come from what, but credit card companies do change their perks and do change their rewards, so it does help if you spend a little bit of time every year and just review which credit card perks give you what. One of the travel cards that I use is the Amex Platinum card. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of the companies that I'm talking about, I'm just telling you what I use, but I use the Amex Platinum card for my travel purchases, and one of the things that I like about the Amex Platinum card is that it gives you access to travel lounges. So when you go to the airport, it gives you access to some of the lounges. Well, one of the problems over the last couple of years and few years is that there have been so many people getting this card that have been going into lounges, so these lounges have been becoming very full. And just recently, I found out that they raised their fee. Now, to me, that's actually a good thing because that means less people are going to have the card and less people are going to be going into these airport lounges. However, one of the changes that they also made, which I didn't know, was that they also started offering Audible subscriptions for free. Well, I use Audible a lot. I love reading audiobooks and I pay for this every single month and this had been going on for I don't know how many months and my friend was asking me how I like this Audible with subscription through my Amex Platinum. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, Amex is going to pay for Audible. I said, what are you talking about? And then he told me that Amex changed it, so now they also pay for your Audible subscription. When I first got this Amex Platinum card, they did not offer that. So I don't know how long I went on, and I could have had my Audible subscription paid for on my Amex Platinum card. Well, as soon as I found out, I logged into my Amex Platinum, and I synced it with my Audible, and now my Audible is paid for by my credit card company. I don't want you spending a lot of time doing this because I'd rather you spend your money investing your money or growing your income or doing something that's a little bit more productive, but spend 15 to 30 minutes max a year and just review your credit cards, review what perks they offer, review what rewards you can get, and make sure you're using them. Because many times, credit card companies have a whole bunch of perks that most people never use. In fact, they bank on people not using the rewards, so I don't want you to be one of those people, and I want you to learn how to use those rewards, because why not get what you pay for? Number five, I want you to invest in yourself a little bit more aggressively. I used to be very cheap and I hated the idea of spending money on anything because my whole thinking was if I spend $1,000, if I spend $500, if I spend $5,000, that's money that's no longer in my account and now I'm officially broker or poorer than I was before. But I never thought, what if I spend $1,000 and that makes me $5,000. It was very difficult for me to start investing money into my own education. It was so bad that I was turning down great investment opportunities. I started investing in real estate after the 2008 crash and I was in Michigan where real estate prices were hit especially hard. Real estate prices were hit sometimes 90 to 93 percent and I remember looking at single family homes that were 30 to 40, 45 thousand dollars. There were three bedroom, one and a half homes that would have rented out for over a thousand dollars a month and I was looking at it saying, who in the world would want to pay thirty dollars to $45,000 for one of these homes when just a couple months ago or a few months ago, they were selling for twenty dollars to $30,000? I thought that they were so overpriced that it was a waste of money, and I turned down so many of these deals from $30,000 to $45,000 to $50,000 to $60,000, and those same homes that I was turning down because I was being so cheap are now worth many multiples of what they were then, and they're renting for significantly higher today than what they were then. Now, while most investment opportunities are changing all the time, the one opportunity that does not change, that is always there, is for you to invest in yourself. And many times, I know I was like this, you feel, why would I want to invest a few thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or even ten dollars into this education, into this book, into this coaching, into whatever it is, because now I'm going to be a smaller bank account. I'm going to have less cash in my bank account. So why should I invest this money when, when in reality, you can save years of time of learning, you can reduce how much money you're going to lose that will already make 10 times how much money you probably have to spend on that education, and then you can make 10 times more money. Now, this doesn't mean that every piece of education that you get is going to be useful. However, 99% of people don't go broke by investing in their financial education. I say 99% because there's always going to be that one outlier that did something wrong. However, 
99% of people don't go broke by investing in their financial education. Number six, use some of your money to protect your money. As an attorney who's not your attorney, I can tell you that we live in America, the most litigious country in the world. Everybody wants to sue everybody for everything, and you want to make sure that as soon as you start making some money, that you have somebody looking at you to make sure that you are protected. If you're investing in real estate, you want to make sure you have the right insurance. You want to make sure you have the right entities. You want to make sure you have a good attorney protecting you. If you have other investments, you want to make sure your attorney is looking at you to make sure that you have the right protections, the right shields in place to protect you. If you have a business, you have to have an attorney to make sure that your business is fully protected with the right entity shields, with the right insurance, with the right contracts, with the right legal protection. Protection. These are things that most people never learn until it's too late. However, you have to spend a little bit of money now to make sure that your family and you are protected. And if you don't have these other investments, if you don't have any real estate, if you don't have a business, you still need an attorney to protect you with things like estate planning, asset protection. These are things that we all need and most of the times we never learn this until it's too late. If you have any sort of money or assets or wealth, you need an attorney to look at your financials and make sure that you have some sort of estate planning protection. This might be a will, this might be a trust. You need to make sure you have something because if you don't and you die, then it's going to be the government who decides where your money goes. And if something changes in your life, you get married, you have kids, something happens, well, now you also want to make adjustments to your will, to your trust, to whatever estate planning tools that you have. So get a good attorney. If you're looking for an attorney, I am not going to do your legal work for you. However, I can refer you to an attorney if that's something that you're interested in. And I have this form that you can fill out where my team will refer you to an attorney. So if you need an estate planning attorney, a business attorney, an investment attorney, a bankruptcy attorney, whatever, I have somebody that I can refer you to. And if you want that, well, you can fill out the form down in the description below. Number seven, one thing that I want you to do this year is I want you to buy a book about something that you know nothing about and actually read it. Most of the books that I've read besides Harry Potter are all around the same genre of money, business, entrepreneurship, and things in that nature. But one of my good friends kept telling me to read a book about spirituality. What the heck is spirituality? I had no idea. And he kept telling me to read a few books on spirituality. And eventually, this year, I finally decided to listen and I got a book on spirituality. The book was Conversations with God. And it was about something that I've never, ever dove into, but it was very interesting. And it opens up your mind to new things that you never really thought of before. Maybe it's not going to change your life. Maybe it's not going to change the way you think, but you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes you want to listen to people that disagree with you. Like when I read my business books, I always try to read books with people who disagree with one another. I read Donald Trump's book. I also read Barack Obama's book. I read books from things that contradict their own opinions and the things that I believe because it allows you to think a little bit better. And one of the things that I started doing is reading books about things that I know nothing about. And it might be something that I disagree with. It might be something that I don't like. It might be something that I don't understand. But you don't know what you don't know. And we're on this earth to learn. And one of the simplest ways to do that is, is go out, find a book, talk to a friend about something that they like, ask them what their best favorite book recommendations is, and read it. Number eight is enjoy some of your money. So this one, I'm going to be honest, is one of the hardest things for me to do because like I said earlier, I've always been so cheap and I've always been that person that's known to not take vacations, to not take days off, to always be working and to never spend money unless it's into my business or unless it's going to give me a tax deduction. If it doesn't fall into that, I don't want to spend that money. This work ethic and this spending ethic made me a lot of money and it made me very financially successful. However, one of the things that now I am starting to work on is starting to enjoy. Now, it also helps with my wife pushing me towards this starting to enjoy money thing, but it's a balance for me because I like what I do. I like working. I can never see myself not working. My wife knows that when we go on a vacation, I'm going to be working. My wife knows that when we went on our honeymoon, I'm going to be working. She understands that about me, but it's more of a balance where you have to be able to enjoy some of the things that you enjoy doing. Now, this doesn't mean just blow your money on a bunch of dumb things. I don't like designer clothes. I don't spend money on designer clothes, and I would never spend money on designer clothes just because of the brand. I buy things because I like them. If they have nice quality and it's something that I want, I will buy it. I don't buy it for the brand name, but that's me. You gotta find some of the things that you really like, the things that make you happy, the things that bring you joy, and be willing to spend within your wage within your budget 
on those things. So don't go blow money that you don't have, but spend money that you do have on the things that you like. I now spend more money on things that I like, things like travel. I have spent way more money this year on travel than ever before because I can afford it, but I also like traveling in a certain style, in a certain luxury, and that's something that provides value to me. Now, of course, I can afford it. Make sure you can afford before you can spend, but figure out the things that are important to you and as you start making more money, because if you've been following my videos, you've been following the education, now you have more money to invest, you have cash flow coming in, you own assets. Well, now as you start building the wealth, you also wanna make sure that you can enjoy some of that wealth as well. Number nine, get the best returns possible on your investments. Let me show you why. If you can invest $500 a month, which is actually less than the average new car payment in America right now, and you can do this for 45 years, and you can get a 15% annual return on your money every year for the next 45 years, guess what? You are going to be a DECA millionaire with over 10 million dollars. It's actually going to be many millions over 10 million dollars, but for the purpose of this video, you're going to have over 10 million dollars if you can do that. Now you might be saying, but Jaspri, where in the world am I going to get a consistent 15% return on my money? Well, let me show you somebody who's doing it each and every day. Your credit card company is charging you 15, 16, 17, 18, even 22% a year on your money that you spent. And if you carry your credit card balance, guess what? You are the person that's making your credit card company rich each and every day at the expense of your future wealth. So if you have credit card debt and you want to get the best returns possible on your investments, don't put that money into the stock market. Don't put that money into the real estate market. Take that cash and pay this down right now because as soon as you pay this down, it is a guaranteed 15, 16, 17, 18% return on your money and it's guaranteed because if you can pay down your debt 1% early, that's a 15, 16, 17, 18% return on your money over that year. So if you have credit card debt, if you have that sort of high interest debt, pay that off first before you go and try to invest your money into anything else. Pay down the high interest debt. Once you do that, now you can consider stock market, real estate, and everything else investing because right now, this is way better than the returns that you're gonna get in the market. Number 10, create your own income. We have been seeing a growing divide between the haves and the haves nots ever since the early 1970s. We have been seeing a growing divide between the rich, a growing divide between the poor, and this is something that has been going on and it's going to continue. Everybody knows the story. Back in the early 1970s, you used to have one person who used to go to work and that income would not only allow you to buy a home and have cars, but that income would allow you to live freely. Now, you have two income households that are struggling to buy a home, that are struggling to get a car, that are struggling to live freely. So, something has changed if 1970s, you could have one person do that, and today, two people can barely do that. Now, the question is, what do you do about it? Do you just shrug your shoulders and say, oh, that sucks? Do you cry and complain and kick and scream about it, saying how much the world sucks? Or do you do something about it and start creating your own income? By the way, if you want some backstory as to why this really accelerated after the early 1970s, well, a big part of that has to do with inflation. And in 1971, President Richard Nixon took the dollar off of the gold standard, which allowed our government, along with the help of the Federal Reserve Bank, to essentially print money on command. The more dollars you print, the more inflation you have, meaning the value of your dollars go down. And now this creates a big differentiation between people who are financially educated because they know how to fight inflation and use inflation to their advantage versus everybody else who don't know how to do that because unfortunately, inflation disproportionately hurts the people who are financially uneducated and the poor and inflation disproportionately benefits the wealthy and the financially educated. This is where it becomes so important for so many more people to start creating their own income. This doesn't mean you got to quit your job and stop working. This means that you have to start creating your own income as well. And yeah, it's more work. Yeah, it takes more time. Yeah, that means you're going to have less time to watch Netflix on evenings, but it can create the opportunity for you to have way more financial freedom if you can start creating your own income. And the best part, the best part is that the internet has made it so much more accessible because anybody can do this from the comfort of their home with their laptop. Now, does this mean it's easy? No. Accessible just means that more people can do it 
but it's going to take more work. You're going to have to start learning. You're going to have to make mistakes and you're going to have to try because some people are going to like making YouTube videos. How are you doing? Some people are going to like doing podcasts. Some people might like doing things on social media. Some people might hate the entire social media space. Maybe you start something else. Maybe you start an e-commerce store. Maybe you start something with an affiliate blog. Maybe you start something else. There's an infinite number of ways that you can create income on the internet, but you have to provide some value to somebody else, somebody who's going to pay you for the services or product that you provide. So what you have to do is go on a quest to see what it is that somebody will be willing to pay you for. Start by watching YouTube videos. It doesn't cost you a penny. Then start by reading books. Then maybe take a class and do things. Don't get into the trap where you're just consuming, consuming, consuming consuming and then do nothing. Consume, take action. Consume, take action, screw up, learn, start consuming and do more. Number 11, take some risk. Nobody achieves any sort of wealth without taking on some sort of risk and you have to decide what type of risk is right for you. Investing your money in stocks is risky. Investing your money in real estate is risky. Starting a business is risky. Not starting a business is risky. Not investing in real estate is also risky. Not investing in stocks is risky. Keeping your money in the bank is risky because your cash is never going to grow. Your cash is going to be eaten away by inflation. So now you got to pick your level of risk. And when you do that, understanding that higher risk does come with a potential for higher reward. It doesn't guarantee it. But this is now how do you mitigate the risk while also getting the higher returns? That's where the highest success is found. And the way that you can lower your risk is by being more educated. Most people think of risk as throwing their money into a meme stock or throwing their money into a cryptocurrency with a cat or a dog on it and hoping that they're gonna be able to double or triple their money in six months. When in reality, that's gambling. And if you really wanna take calculated risks, it's about being educated and figuring out how you can get better returns with your money for yourself, whether it's through investments or through income that you create. You're risking your money, you're also risking your time, but make sure that when you're taking these risks that you're also learning that when you take that risk again, you can get higher returns with less risk. This ties in very well to number 12, which is make some speculative investments. I talked about how there's five places that I invest. My own business, real estate, stocks, cryptocurrency, mainly Bitcoin, and then some physical gold. Well, within this, I have a small piece of my portfolio, which are the more speculative investments. That's where the cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, lies. And that's where my startup investments lie. I have a small piece of my total investment portfolio of all of the money that I have invested everywhere, a small piece of this is in speculative investments. These are things that if they went to zero, no big deal. But they also have a lot of higher upside. Now, when I say make some speculative investments, this doesn't mean make 80% of your portfolio a speculative investment. This means make a small piece of your entire investment portfolio somewhere between 0% and maybe on the high end, 20% depending on how much wealth you have. If you have more wealth and you have the ability to take on more risks, fine. If you don't, then you want to be closer to the lower levels. So zero to 20%, 20% max on some speculative investments. And this is where you can have a little bit of fun. Have some fun in your portfolio, throwing your money into things where you hope that it can go up quickly, but you also understand that it could go to zero just as fast. 13 and extremely important is you have to have a cash buffer. If you don't have a savings account yet, you got to go and do this right away. You want to save somewhere between three months and 12 months worth of expenses in a savings account. And this savings is not there to be invested. It's not there to be spent on a car or a UTV or a new home. This savings is there just to protect you against a financial emergency in case your income goes away, in case your cash flow goes away, in case everything is going wrong, you have cash to fall back on. That way now you don't have to scramble, you don't have to go into debt when you don't have an income. This is why your savings are there and your savings are there to do nothing else. You hope that your savings just sit there and collect dust. But if you don't have these savings, you are in financial danger because if something bad were to happen, now you're going to be forced to go into debt to make up for your costs. Save yourself the headache and put aside three to 12 months worth of savings that we have cash to fall back on. And the amount of cash that you're gonna put aside is gonna depend on your risk tolerance. If your risk tolerance is low, you have a whole bunch of people relying on you financially, then you wanna be closer to the 12 months. If you have a high risk tolerance, you have nobody relying on you financially, you don't have a lot of financial liabilities, then maybe three months. Number 14, you wanna get an accounting checkup. Just like how you get your doctor's checkup. Just like how I was saying you need to have a good attorney to protect you, you gotta make sure you have a good accountant, especially if you have any sort of wealth. And I can tell you this from experience because I've worked with very bad accountants and I've worked with very good accountants. If all your CPA is doing is filing your taxes, you are way overpaying on your taxes. 
period. Get a good accountant that doesn't just file your taxes, but does your bookkeeping and also does your tax planning and tax strategizing. It's going to cost you a whole lot more. It's going to cost more money, but you're also going to get more value because there's so much value in tax planning and tax strategizing where now they're going to sit with you and say, okay, it looks like this month your tax liability is X. And now you can say, all right, here are the things that you can do to lower your tax liability legally. As an attorney, I can tell you that the IRS tax code is very difficult to understand. It's thousands of pages long. It's not worth your time to try to sit there and maximize your deductions. Get somebody who likes reading the tax code, who likes studying deductions, so they can tell you all the different things that you can take because every year the deductions change, the way that you can lower your taxes change. But if you have somebody who is good and this is all they do, it can save you a ton of money in the long term because now their fees will pay for itself because yeah, you're gonna pay them more money, but you should hopefully be paying a whole lot less in taxes legally. And number 15, invest in your own health. This could be your mental health, this could be your physical health. We have one body, this is it. And so if you don't take care of this machine that you have, well then your machine could go into the ground and you might not be ready to go, but your machine can't take you any further. Invest in your health, eat better foods, get yourself a gym membership, get yourself better food, get yourself things that will help you take care of your physical body and stop putting the junk in your body. Stop drinking all the sugary pops, stop eating all the junk food. All this food is doing is shortening your lifespan. Take better care of your physical body and take better care of your mental health. If you don't feel happy, if you don't feel fulfilled, if you feel miserable, if you feel depressed, if you feel anxious, get help. Take cash, go out and find a therapist to help you, whatever the fee is. If you really need help, go and check yourself in to a rehab center. Even if it costs $30,000, go and spend that money because if you don't have the ability to be happy, you're never going to be able to live your life. Spend whatever it takes to take care of your mental health and to take care of your physical health. Watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, read books, and if that's not enough, go out and get a therapist. If that's not enough, go and check yourself in. It does not matter what the price is, do whatever it takes to take care of your health because if your health is not okay, you're never going to be able to make any more money ever. And if you do, you're never going to be able to enjoy that money. So take care of yourself first. Because I remember back in these days, when I used to go work in the wedding business, I used to work in the wedding business for a number of years. We used to go and what did we do? Well, we had it was a few of us guys. We used to go and find the cheapest hotel room because the wedding party who was paying for us to travel to this hotel, they might give us an allowance of $200 a night for a hotel. And so in our minds, if you're paying us $200 a night for a hotel, 